Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Trying to discuss further into integrals and volumes and go over the third example in this um, example series. I'll go over this example, which states find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the region bounded by y equals x uh, cubed uh, and y equals 8 and x equals 0 about the x axis. So, yeah, like uh, in my earlier videos, the first thing we should do is always just graph what this uh, question is asking. So, first one is, let's draw this out, there's x, there's the y-axis, and in this case is x cubed. So, the function of x cubed looks something like this, and it goes down because negative uh, values make it a negative uh, function right there. So, this is y equals x cubed. And now up to y equals 8, just draw it over there, and it's end at here where it's y equals, uh, I mean x equals 0, right at the center right there. So, in all, and then always the second thing to do is rotate this, or rotate the region about which axis it's asked, in this case y axis. So if we were to rotate it around, we'll have something that looks like this, it's a bit, bit off. Looks something like that, so that's just a circular region like that. It looks something like this. And if we just draw a generic x value right or a generic y value right here, so this we'll call this, yeah, this is just a generic y. And as you can see, the difference between this and my earlier examples, uh, this is rotating it about, about the y axis. So if we were to draw a region around this way, it's better drawing it this way than drawing it vertical up and down like this. Just because it looks much, yeah, it's much easier to calculate because we have perfect circles like this and the functions rotate about the y-axis. So the difference now is we'll have to, um, it's better to draw this region and f solve the volume and integral basing this all on if we were to make this by, yeah, by using uh, respect to y instead of x. So we'll consider dy or delta y and this region right here, the radius is going to be x, but we're going to have to write this as y. So if we were to draw a small cylinder like this, it will be like that across this whole uh, piece right here. Now here I quickly just fixed up my drawing, makes it uh, slightly neater. So now this area, we have to write it as area of y, because uh, once again it's better writing this in respect to y as opposed to x, because it's just much easier, because it's rotated around the y-axis. So we, if we write this as a function of y, well the area is going to be pi r squared, and r in this case is x, that's just the, uh, the that's going to be our r, so pi r squared, or is equal to, yeah, same thing as pi x squared. But we got to write this as a function of y instead, and we know that uh, y equals x cubed, so we got to write this as x squared, so we make both sides to the power of 2 over 3. So y 2 over 3 equals to x 3, power of 2 over 3, and these cancel, so we're left with x squared. So this equals 2 pi times to by y 2 over 3 like that so we have our area there's our uh, delta y so when we look at the volume we look at a infinitely small delta y so we get what volume from 0 to y equals 8 of now pi y 2 over 3 that's the a of y volume times to by dy so we're considering y instead of x so now we could solve this integral. So we'd first we could take the y out of there, and the integral of of this is going to be, well, y, this is going to be, now we add, one, add 3 over 3, so 5 over 3. So we have to add a power, and the power is 3 over 3. And now we add the flip side of this, so 3 over 5, because taking the, inter taking the derivative of this, we'll get to this one right here, where the 5 over 3 comes down, these cancel and we'll have the 2 over 3 in the power. Now this is from 0 to 8. So now this equals 2, plugging these in, we'll get pi times 3 over 5, plugging the 8 in, times by 8, power of 5 over 3. Well again, when we plug in the 0, we get to minus 0, 0, uh, y, if it's 0, 0 to the power of anything is just going to be, well, well 0. 
Yes, yeah, so now we're left with just this right here. Now we gotta simplify this further. So we have this 3 over 5 times it by pi times it by 8. Um, now what we could do is this one is pretty neat is write this as uh, take the 5 out. So we could do this We're using our exponent rules. So we'll have a th 8 1 over 3. This is the same thing as this quick way of solving this. This equals 2, well, 2. Yeah, this is uh, 1 over 3 of 8 is 2, because 2 times 2 times 2 equals to 8, so that's the answer in between, so 2 over 5. Now, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 up to 5, that's just 32, so this equals to uh, pi over 5, and then this is going to be 3 times 32. That's just 32. 3 times 32, that's 96. So we have pi 96 over 5 as our answer. Yeah, and these are just exact ones here. If you, and you can plug in the calculator and solve that. But if you're doing a calculus exam, this should be good enough. Actually, uh, this might even be good enough if you're taking an exam if it doesn't ask to simplify. But anyways, that's the answer. And uh, hopefully you learned from this video on how to... Basically, uh, yeah, when we're rotating about a y-axis, it's important to that you could just switch the uh, variable from x to y to make it easier in the integral. Instead of having to do a volume that's a vertical one like this and solving for the respective uh, functions in terms of x, which is just a bit more complicated, and this is much easier. Anyways, that's all for today. Uh, like always, you could download these exact notes in the link below, and thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution